so we have with us dr haike reel she is head of science and technology lead ibm research quantum europe she is she also is an ibm fellow and this is company's highest technical distinction so she has her expertise in the field of quantum computing physics of artificial intelligence nano science and nanotechnology so you joined ibm research in 1998 as a phd student and from 1998 to 2021 you have already traveled you know vast a vast experience great experience Um, so quantum computing, quantum physics, um, it's really an exciting field. And actually, but first, I was first attracted to physics and only then second to quantum physics. And why I was attracted to physics was because I really loved math and also technical things and, um, you know, doing things with my hand, actually. So understanding what is behind, understanding in the logic thinking, this is also the basis for improving things. And this is really what attracted me actually to study then physics. And so I thought physics is perfect. I did it and I really enjoyed it. And this is also where I can then continued um, physics in my career, joined IBM uh, to do research and to do first my PhD, as you also mentioned. And so for me, physics is of course an exciting feat, but then during the studies of physics, I realized that quantum mechanics is so special it's so different to what I was used to that I really found this super exciting. And um, there are new physical phenomena which are at the core. And this was something completely new. I was not aware. And there are so many exciting things which are also actually in our daily life, but we don't realize them because we may not know about them. And quantum computing is, of course, one of them. So I got excited about this topic. But it also seemed so far into the future at that time when I was studying. Um, and so when I joined IBM, I was actually not working on quantum computing at the beginning, but I worked on different topics like organic light emitting devices, nanowires and other things. And but of course, we also had a team in the US actually working on quantum computing. And I always had an eye on what is going on also in quantum computing. And then in 2015, I, um, I went to the US to lead the physical sciences department within the IBM uh, Watson Research Center in Yorktown Heights. And quantum computing, this team was actually also part of my department. And this is where I really then got much closer to quantum computing. And it was also a great time because the team has done and has demonstrating really exciting breakthrough experiments. And they were getting ready to the first five Cupid processor, which they demonstrated then in around 2015 timeframe. And exciting things started. We had to decide about bring, what do we do with this five Cupid processor? And we brought it into the cloud. And this is really where I got more into the topic. And uh, since then quantum computing also within IBM, of course, um, has grown quite tremendously and more and more people are getting involved and working on it. So yeah, this is uh, how I came to quantum computing. Yeah, uh, great question. And um, th there is, of course, there are many things had to be developed in order to come to the stage where we are, right? Today, we already have a quantum computer. They are real. They are no longer in the realm of science fiction, but they are also at an early stage. So where are we today, but how do we come there? So quantum computers, they are a very difficult technology. And in order to control them, you need to very precisely exploit the quantum effects and they can be very fragile. And so you need to learn how to create these quantum effects, how to control these quantum effects and how to exploit them then for quantum computing. And along the last like 30, 40 years from the first idea of quantum computing, quantum computers by Richard Feynman in 1981 to now a lot of breakthroughs have already happened, which brought us to the point that we can build a quantum computer. And they start from the basics of the theory in quantum physics to building the concept of a universal quantum computer, just theoretically also. 
then understanding how a qubit needs to be built and demonstrating the individual functions of a qubit, like the control, the reading of information and all these things. And then you are able to build the first qubit, you improve the quality, etc. So today we have like a 65 qubit processor. And so where are we going today? What are kind of today the biggest challenges? It's the scaling. So how can we scale the number of qubits to even more qubits beyond the thousand towards the one million? Then also the quality of the qubit. How can we further improve the quality of such a qubit? And then the third, I would say, is really developing the right algorithms for using quantum computers for real applications and providing the value and um, the, you know, the improvement compared to classical computers. Yeah, I think the, I mean, doing research, of course, you, you always pick the challenges, right? Uh, that's kind of, uh, you always want to go to the limits where you may not see a path today, but you need to create that path to bring the technology forward, to move the technology forward and create new things. And I think so it's kind of part of our daily life that we search for those challenges. And so it's, I think, a bit difficult to say what is the, the big, what was the biggest challenges because we really try to pick every time the biggest challenge. And um, of course, there are many examples, and this also makes our job so exciting. But they can be different things. Um, and I mean, I can give you um, a few examples. And uh, one specific one is um, we had. I've been working. We have started to work on nano wires. These are actually tiny. Um, nano uh, like cylinders of semiconductors nano wires of semiconductors they look like our hair but they're like uh, 50,000 times thinner and uh, we wanted to use those materials for building the next generation of transistors because you know in the silicon device technology you always have to make things smaller in order to increase the performance over the last 20 years uh, last 40 50 years actually and so like 20 years ago, we were having the same issue and said, okay, what do we do next? And we said, okay, the perfect transistor would be a transistor where we can wrap the control, the gate around the material, like a cylindrical material. And so we started to create the material, but it was very difficult because of the dimensions and also controlling from a fabrication point of view, everything, and also understanding the physics behind. So we were not clear whether this will really work. And if you look back on the devices which we built at that time, they actually came a long way. And actually today, we have just like two months ago, we have announced the two nanometer um, technology node for the next generation of silicon technology. And this is where all the research which we have been doing went into. And we are now able to do this actually in 300 millimeters and build the next generation of um, digital computers out of this. So. 20 years back, this was our goal, but it was also a very, very difficult goal. And we kind of, um, how do they divide it into different steps in order to be able to make these steps and in the end, uh, be, be ready for doing those things. Yeah, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's again, a very, really great question because in the end we are building quantum computers uh, for applications. And uh, we also, in the quantum computers you may have heard, they really have the potential to solve um, problems which digital classical computers cannot solve. And these are problems where the, um, the, the complexity of the problem increases exponentially with the number of parameters. And you can find these challenges in many different areas, whether it's in chemistry, in designing new materials and molecules, in machine learning, or also in optimization. And optimization problems you also have in many different areas. This can be from um, routing um, the, the, um, the cars trans in the transport industry, um, routing tracks to be most efficient, to save fuel. It can be also um, developing new materials um, or in the optimization area, like um, in, in financial industry, 
um, or also how do you optimize your process flow in a manufacturing site? So there are many, many optimization problems. And so the most, these are actually the most promising industrial applications for a quantum system are in the area of developing new materials in the chemistry area, in uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence as second, and the third is the optimization area. And here, for example, why chemistry? Because molecules, they actually um, are governed by the laws of quantum physics. So each atom, each electron within the atom, they all um, are governed by the laws of quantum physics. And the same is that a quantum processor is also governed by the laws of quantum physics. So it's a direct match. And practically today, we are not able to characterize those molecules by the classical digital computers um, completely. Uh, we can do approximations, that's what we learned in physics and chemistry, but we cannot accurately characterize or calculate their properties. And quantum computers have the potential to be able to do this. And um, this is something we work on. We work on uh, those types of algorithms and applications. And uh, we have already demonstrated um, um, calculations for smaller types of molecules and with the increasing size of the quantum computers and with the increasing insight and development of new algorithms, we are able to actually go to bigger and bigger molecules um, to actually then predict the properties and create new materials. And why is this important, you may ask? Actually, materials are very important for almost every industry, um, whether these are better batteries um, for having more capacity, being easier to charge them, having more endurance, or whether this is for more lightweight materials, or whether this is for room temperature superconductivity to have no resistance in uh, in um, in conducting materials, etc. So there's a lot of things where we can get a lot of more efficiency into the system um, by improving the materials. Of course. So you're right. I mean, I, I gathered so far a lot of experience already in research. And I think the most important for me, at least was follow always your passion, because if you follow your passion, you you really like what you do and then you can excel. Then you can, you know, you you kind of really like and you are passionate with it. You put your energy and your creative thought in. And so I think that's kind of that's true for everyone. Uh, whether independent on at which location you are. I think you always can enjoy it and can give the best if uh, you really like what you do. And also be in a good environment that you have, uh, that you have fun at work, uh, working with colleagues. So I'm actually pretty collaborative. I really like to work together in teams to achieve things. I think also then the celebration is much better than if you do things alone. Uh, so I really um, like to work also in teams to achieve, um, you know, great things. So follow your passion. For me, this was the math and physics and also doing things by hand. And therefore I think quantum computing right now is really a very exciting topic. It's also at the beginning. So there is a lot of new research, new discoveries to be done. And the other thing is that there are also a lot of tools actually already available worldwide um, in order to be used. And this is probably also very, uh, very nice for the, co your, the colleagues in India that um, there are really many opportunities. Um, we have brought, for example, the, the first five qubit quantum computer into the cloud in 2016, now about five years ago. And since then, everyone actually has access to a quantum computer around the world. And so you can make use of this access, right? There are more quantum computers now available through the cloud, which you can use and you can start using them. You can become creative, you can test algorithms, you can learn about quantum computing and about quantum physics. Uh, you actually also have access uh, through the internet and through our uh, website. Actually, you can you can um, um, search for it, where you find a lot of information about quantum physics, about quantum computing. We also have a textbook where you can learn how to program a quantum computer. Uh, you need a bit of Python. But uh, then you just go through this textbook, Qiskit textbook. Qiskit is our uh, quantum information uh, open source software kit. And uh, 
you can also participate in events which we have. Um, this may be hackathons, this may, these are summer schools and uh, as everything they're also now virtual so it's easy for actually to participate. There we also have uh, like a quantum ambassador team and um, um, people in India who, whom you can also reach out and, um, and get into Qiskit and uh, using quantum computers, getting trained and learning about them. I think there's really a lot of interesting research and development to be done and it's at the early stage. So you are right at the beginning part of it and you can shape it. So learn and use the tools available and uh, yeah, become creative and then have fun with it. Yes, I'm very happy because uh, to, to share a few thoughts. Um, I think it's really about giving everyone the, the opportunity to do what you like to do. And for me, this was uh, math and physics and doing things by hand. And I was lucky to have the opportunity and also be kind of um, follow the path I thought was the best for me. And um, I know that sometimes it's not so easy for girls because the society tells girls you should not be good in math, uh, you should not be as much interested in technology. And I think um, for people really do what you like to do. And so have also girls coming into this and um, have them enjoy, um, you know, the use of technology. And so that's why I also would like to encourage people and girls to not feel like a minority if you do this, but just do what you like. <laughs>